Welcome to Infinity Within Coaching Podcast. My name is Nita Kruger, and I'm your host for today. Thank you for showing up, and I am really proud of you for investing in yourself. Today, we're going to talk about something that is near and dear to my journey, and it's not very socially popular, depending on where you're at in your journey and who you're listening to in the world of social media. And that is just kind of the reality check of the fact that as you are traveling your journey of healing, there are things that were out of your control. And in order for you to begin getting real and setting really great boundaries and having self-love and getting off the sidelines of your life and into the actioning, living part of your life, You have to take this step. And I remember before I took this particular step, we're going to talk about, oh my God, the shame, the shame that filled me. I was mortified, destroyed at what had just grown out of control in my family's daily living, the things that we had normalized. And this word that I'm going to share with you that kind of gave me the permission to begin moving forward and taking charge of unlearning toxic normals. And it began to open the door to actioning my way to a better, healthier life for myself and my children. The very unpopular thing that I feel is incredibly necessary for anybody on a healing journey is for them to get real about the fact that they, whatever the trauma might be. So uh, that's not to minimize anybody's trauma. Let's just get really clear about that. But it is just to Uh, equalize that whatever your pain source may be, in order for you to detach from it, to recognize it, to see it, and to begin to learn something healthier and uh, build healthier around you, you have to become aware that so much of the pain that happened to you was out of your control. And that so many of the life choices, even maybe the path that you're on right now was because of other people's cruelty, emotional neglect, uh, physical abuse, sexual abuse, financial abuse. You have to get real with the fact that you are a victim to somebody else's behavior. And that isn't necessarily a popular thing or a comfortable thing for us to put our heads around. For me, it stalled me out because how could that have happened? How could all of the that items have happened? The magnitude was overwhelming. And every time, like the minute that I would open my mouth, for decades at the unjustness of whatever the situation might be for uh, the few people that were uh, very, very toxic and unhealthy to me, the minute that I would stand up for myself and push back, I would get so severely put in my place. And that could be in a multitude of responses And for anybody who has suffered narcissistic abuse, you will understand what I mean by a multitude from a glare to punishment to turning the tides on me and me becoming the abuser. The very first step, and I I just cannot emphasize this enough, the very first step to taking back and igniting your soul's light 
is acknowledging that something happened that was out of your control. And whether you like it or society likes it or not, that makes you a victim of whatever that circumstance might have been. Now, here's the key, though. This is the pivot moment. It doesn't own you for life. It doesn't own you. How I refer to that, rather, is that it's your opportunity card. Once you go, well, somebody manipulated, controlled, demeaned, dehumanized, abused, sexually, physically, emotionally, mentally, psychologically destroyed me to the point where I don't even feel like I have an identity. I'm hiding from the world and I'm hiding from everything in, in life and in living. Once you realize that those things were out of your control, that you were a victim to somebody else's controlling lifestyle choices, you can begin to have the opportunity and the options and create possibility of healing in your life. Now, for some of you wondering what that sound is in the background, my giant white fluffy dog is snoring. (laughs) He is in my home studio right now, and I don't have the heart to wake him up and get him to leave. So we're just going to let him sleep away in the background. We have to come to grips with the reality that something bad happened to us and then we can learn to take the steps to grieve it to face it and it's after we grieve it and face it and acknowledge it and we work with a guide to move past it we can begin to really develop our sense of self we can build our self-worth our self-love our self-confidence We can begin to invest in ourselves and we can dismantle, even if the people are, uh, let's just use, for instance, uh, toxic family. I think, you know, just about everybody has a toxic family member in their life. And if you don't, more power to the amazing journey that you have, because You have done some serious generational work, maybe even a generation before you. And that was powerful. In this space, we're really realistic, though, about the hurt and pain that is out there. And in order to heal from that, we've got to stop pretending that other people are looking at the world through the same lens that we are, through the same lens of safety, kindness, humanity, family. Not everybody has our value system. And we have, largely as abuse victims or people who suffer anxiety, panic attacks, PTSD, depression, uh, depersonalization, the list goes on and on and on. We largely suppress and do not speak up for ourselves. One thing that we have in common across a multitude of illnesses and uh, depressive states of self. We don't say what we need to say when we want to say it. We live in a space of fear uncertainty is not our friend yet it's uncertainty that creates our strength and allows us to grow and build new opportunities new passions develop new skills one of the things that has stuck with me that I remember learning uh, quite a long time ago when I first really started to get Oh, uncomfortable. And I remember getting teased by, yeah, it was teased by uh, people in my community when I came out about domestic violence. 
and I would overhear people making fun of me being abused. And they didn't necessarily know that I could hear them. I didn't confront them. But I was faced with a great discomfort because I could shut up and I could pretend that everything was fine and I could stay right where I had always stayed. But I knew that was going to kill me and likely one or more of my children. Stuffing what we're feeling, what we're experiencing into an empty bottomless well within us does nothing but destroy us. It doesn't stop people doing bad things. What stops really disgusting toxic behavior is for us to get uncomfortable with what we've been trained to accept as normal. For us to sit in our own discomfort and realize that that is an ally to our growth, to our change, and to our development. And that by allowing the people around us to stuff us into a box that makes them feel comfortable, we are living small and disconnected from who we're meant to be. And what I learned early, early on in my journey is that I preferred to be uncomfortable now. I prefer, preferred to have discomfort be my friend. I'm not telling you it's easy. There were weeks, weeks of PTSD attacks where I just couldn't stop the tears. And I kept going. I kept trusting my guides that it would get better if I kept steering my internal ship and being true to myself. And here, five years later, things are a lot different, a lot healthier, a lot safer, a lot sounder. For the first time in my entire life, I feel like I'm the one steering my own ship. And that is something that I have been dreaming of, but absolutely terrified to push myself towards. Discomfort is our friend. The things that are comfortable are the things that are destroying you. And I know that because the things that I was used to were really unhealthy, even evil, cruel things. That's not normal. That isn't normal. I have a visualization that I want to do. So if you're standing, perfect. If you're sitting, perfect. If you're in a car, perfect. What I want you to do is just Imagine or look at the space around you. Maybe even just, you know, put your arms at your side or uh, out, out, uh, stretch your fingertips out. Now imagine that I draw a circle around you. That circle, just a circle around you right there in the ground or a line if you're in the car, just a line around where you're sitting. And that circle represents everything you know, everything you're comfortable with. That's the confines of the life you're living. That's as much as you get. That's all the wiggle room right there. But you're comfortable in there. You know what to expect in there. But it's pretty small and pretty tight. In order for you to move that circle a little bit bigger... You've got to challenge yourself and allow yourself to breathe and grow and be uncomfortable, unfamiliar, uncertain. You've got to allow in new experiences and challenge yourself with new opportunities. Set boundaries. Create self-love. Do things you've never done before. Prioritize you in a way that you've never been done before. Because if we look at that circle around us, and for me, that circle used to be this bed, the bed in my home, 
it used to be literally like I couldn't imagine, uh, not that I never got out of bed, but I was on the go 24, like almost 24 seven, let's say 20 hours of the day awake, seven days a week, sprinting through my life, hell for fire, no stop, no quit. Because I was afraid if I slowed down, I would have to face and deal with all of the complex problems that didn't honor me. That if I dealt with, I'd either have to change or die within. And every time that I sat on the bed alone in my home, which wasn't, you know, very often. Uh, But the consuming rate of all of the weight of my self-abandonment would just push me to devastating tears. And I wouldn't know which way to go. The circle around me was closing in and I was afraid I was going to disappear. It wasn't until just a couple of people got wind of what was happening within my own tortured self. And then I eventually allowed myself to call myself a victim. Because I was. That tiny shift allowed me to reach outside of an oppressive, controlling dominant voice, threatening voice in my home, in my life. It allowed me to reach out for help. It gave me opportunities and options. And suddenly that circle that was closing in on me, it suddenly expanded to breathing room. When I reached out and I put myself into therapy, that circle expanded again. When I learned how to set boundaries, that circle grew even, even if it was just inches, it grew a bit more and I had a bit more room to move around in. I was no longer confined to a consistent course, life course and life actions. I now had some skills and tools to honor me to defend me, to stand up for me, to prioritize me, to legally battle for me, to protect myself and my children. No matter what you're facing, if you're coming out of some kind of oppression, You have to get really real about that and not allow bullies of the world to steal the reality that you've faced. Their reality is not yours and how they see the world is not how you will see the world. And the sooner that you can identify with yourself and begin to cut those invisible tethers or physical tethers, and by physical I mean shared bank accounts, shared decision-making, shared assets, that you can begin to cut those enmeshed relationships. Start putting boundaries and structure in place that honor you and honor the life that you live. The faster your life is going to change and the more opportunities, options, and possibility are going to come your way. We don't We don't get anywhere in life by lying to ourselves. And when we shut off our voice, when we shut off the reality of what's happening to us, we are lying to ourselves. We are telling our soul that what it knows to be true and right is a lie. And that doesn't kill anybody around us. What it does is it completely disconnects us from ourselves and it begins to slowly erode our ability to succeed in our own life. I don't want that for you. I don't want that for anybody. I think that's disgusting. 
abusers kill us through cowardice, slowly eroding who we are because they don't know who they are. And if you take nothing more away from this episode than this, this will change your life. You are put here for you. You are put here to make your choices and your decisions. And there is always an opportunity and a possible path for you to create. You are not here to make the abuser's life comfortable, the controller's life comfortable and amiable. You are not here on this earth for their enjoyment. You are here to ignite your soul's passion and contribute to the quality of life around you. Start at the very beginning and work on just this very basic vocabulary lesson. It doesn't mean you have to go out and take on social media warriors and say, oh, you know, do talk about victims because you will get bashed. It's no fun. And it's just going to stall you out and hurt your feelings. And it doesn't matter what other people believe right and true. The fact is, if somebody hurts you, then you have something you have to heal from. And that alone makes you a victim of whatever might have happened. Acknowledging that gives you the opportunity to heal, grow, change, and embrace uncomfortableness and discomfort. These are your friends and your allies on your healing journey, on your possibility journey, and then on just acknowledging that you get to be who you are and you will never be too much for the wrong people. You will never be too much for small people. You will never be too much for you. Thanks for joining. I hope that you have an amazing day. And I hope that today you wiggle your fingers and you expand your circle. Push that circle out around you some. Don't let it be too tight and confining. If that circle around you that you envision feels like it's closing in instead of growing out, you have an opportunity to change that. And I hope that you grab that opportunity and take whatever step that your intuition is telling you to take. Have a great day.